going to be talking about cause and effect. So we're going to look at this chart. It's the next item on your playlist. I like using Safari with children and with students because it works for them. It's a great place for me to put things and it's a great way for me to stay organized. But when it really started affecting the way I teach and affecting the students was when they started being able to access playlists. And when they started being able to see what was going on in front of them on their digital device instead of just on paper. For some reason, it makes a difference. Students really like being able to access things anywhere. They can go back and read any of the text and see you know, any of the PowerPoints that upload. That's another great thing that I love about Safari is that it works on every device. When I come into my classroom in a day, the students see each thing that we're gonna do that day and I'm able to click from one thing to the next. So it's kind of all in one, one spot now. I think a digital curriculum is imperative when we're moving into becoming architects of curriculum and modern teachers. Neo-millennial learners have to have a place where they are able to grab and explore. They have to have a platform like Safari where they can start at a certain place and know that this is where I'm going to start but I can go here and grab this and then I can go here and grab this and then I can go here and grab this. They learn in webs. So we have to provide some kind of a place where they can go and then grab what they need and kind of center it for them. When I teach Safari to teachers, it is very important that they are able to see what the students see, because that's their audience. We also have a BYOD playlist. When we came back to our school and we trained our teachers, everything that we had done for the district was already in one spot for us to show to the teachers. Some teachers want to have devices in their classrooms right away. They're excited about it. They're willing to experiment. Other teachers want to see other people do it first because then they kind of get an idea of how they want to use it in the classroom. So having the playlists on Safari where we can go in and kind of view for ourselves how other teachers are maybe using it in their classrooms or even so that teachers can view the playlist that's next up for them to view instead of having to attend visual, you know, different training maybe a month out if they need to go back and review something that they just learned or even if they need to pull up some ideas quick on the spot where they're developing lessons. It's a really great place for teachers to access the information as a student. So now the teacher becomes the student and then becomes the teacher again. I like Safari because we have many options and we can do what we need to do on it, we like get it. And we answer questions on there for a test and stuff. Yeah, I like Safari. You can take tests on it. It's better than taking tests on paper. And that's just like old fashioned. And so when I go home, I can also look back and what I did. You don't have to worry about losing papers all the time. And I mean, it's just digital. And everyone uses technology at one point in life, so might as well use it at school. When I was about 18, I went to an interview. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, and they asked me some very specific questions about how I wanted to teach and where I saw myself. I really wanted to have a digital classroom. I wanted to have a paperless classroom and that's what I told them. I did get the scholarship and here I am now and I have a digital classroom and it's kind of a dream come true for me.